All right. This is the second part of the episode. We are doing a Mets preview podcast. Obviously, we got the Mets series coming up tomorrow. Well, by the time you're listening to this, it's today. We got a special guest today, Giraffe Neck Mark, Mark Luino. I think that's how you pronounce it, but you know, you can correct me about that part. But big time YouTuber. I've been following along for your content for a very long time now. I really like your stuff. Honestly, might start a YouTube channel of my own. So we might talk after a little bit about that. But where can the people find you, Mark? Yeah, uh, Giraffe Neck Mark everywhere. Twitter, Instagram, obviously the YouTube channel as well. That's where you can find me nice and easy, and it's Mark with a C, the only way to spell it. Yeah. (laughs) Well, you also started your own Mets podcast, too, so I thought this would be fun because you're already into the podcast game, so we thought this would be a little bit of a... We're going to do this for... The idea was to do this for all of the teams leading up to every series this season, but that's a lot of people that we had to reach out to, and that's a lot of you know, scheduling, we have to do our own pocket, whatever. So we thought the big ones like Mets, Red Sox would be fun to do. So we'd love to kick this off. And it's pretty fun that we both kind of are limping into this series. I, I'm just happy that you guys didn't come off a 20 to two win. And we came off the most horrible loss of the last four years. I'd say, I don't know if you'd say the same Chandler, but that one no, fucking sucked. I think like statistically speaking, I was reading an article this morning. It was the worst loss they've had since the year 2000 (laughs) and like the, like, you know, in the ninth inning, whatever. And then one of the worst, there's another stat. I don't remember what it was. I think it was the seven run stat. I think that was the first one since like 1986. So we're, we're in good shape right now. Yeah. But like I said, I'm glad at least you guys, I mean, you guys lost three out of the last four. This would be an entirely different episode. Had you guys been, on a tear like you have been doing very well this season so i'd like to get your take on like the state of the mets this season kind of in general to start it off what can yankees fans expect to see like the casual yankee fan who's listening to this may not know exactly what's going on with the mets they may just think the mets are still the mets and like dead last in the, in the nle so give us a little taste of what we can expect yeah, we're definitely not the same old Mets. I mean, the Will Pond cloud has been lifted over this team, and now we got Steve Cohen there. So we've got like, you know, good vibes, good juju, as I like to say, a lot of good problems. But what you can expect with this Mets team is like, we're going to pitch extremely well. The pitching has clearly been what saved this entire season because while we've had our injuries on the offensive side and even now a little bit on the pitching side, the pitching has stayed pretty consistent up until last night. That was the first like real blow up that we've had of the season. The pitching's nasty, you know, DeGrom. Strowman, uh, Taiwan Walker's been a savior this year. Those guys are really great. And the bullpen's been awesome. Big shout out to Jeremy Hefner, our pitching coach, changed everything for us. We just don't score a lot of runs. Even with our guys coming back and being healthy, this team has an issue scoring runs. I don't necessarily know why. All the numbers tell us that we should be better than what we are offensively, but it's just not happening right now. So it's like the Mets play very similar baseball right now to one of your guys' rivals in the Tampa Bay Rays, where it's like one-run games, squeezing them out, just barely winning. So I have a question. Are you worried about them going forward? Because right now they have a minus two run differential and they're in first place, but you also have the surging nationals behind them who can't lose. And Schwarber apparently turned into Barry Bonds. So (laughs) what do you, what are you thinking there? Are you worried that the peripheral numbers might catch up and the performance might slack? Are we still feeling confident? No, I still feel confident. I think like if you told me that this would be the Mets record going into the all-star break, I think this is the first time since like, 2007 we're going to finish with an above 500 record going into the all-star break so I would feel pretty good about that like the thing with me and the Mets is that I think as bad as we're playing right now we've been playing bad baseball essentially for an entire for the most of the season not scoring runs we had a triple a lineup going for like basically a month and we still remain in first place throughout that entire time so now with our guys coming back like McNeil can't struggle like this Lindor can't continue to struggle Conforto, all these guys can't continue to be having their worst seasons without at least getting a little bit better. I don't know. I'm not concerned, but I'm definitely keeping more of an eye on it than I thought I would be. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the the injury stuff, and we've been dealing with that for the past two or three years. So you're not you're preaching to the choir here in terms of that, and with the offensive production stuff, the expected stuff you said for the Mets should be higher, and you know. I don't know. I haven't taken a look at really the expected for the entire season for the Yankees, but I mean, you expected, I expected, you know, say your metrics aside, this team on paper to do a lot better offensively. And I think the whole world did. That's why they were so heavily, you know, favored or at least up there in terms of the world series before the season started. If you ask us now, the sky is falling. So we're not really quite there right now, but like, I think 
And I think we were a little bit similar to you guys as well in the beginning of the year when the Yankees pitching was, you know, all all league. And now obviously that tapered off a little bit. Hopefully we get, you know, Kluber back and, and Seve back soon. They're saying like September, but, you know. The thing with our know. rotation, though, we didn't have Stroman and DeGrom and all those out there. We were relying on, you know, Jordan Montgomery to come out there and do that. Who has been okay just, this year. So yeah, yeah, Okay, exactly. He's been okay. Being okay isn't a good way to, you know, know. go forward when you're I think if he was you like your get. your legitimate number 5, you'd be okay with that. But like yeah. the fact that you're like relying on like legitimate innings from this guy. I mean, I love Montgomery. He's a South Carolina Gamecock just like myself, but and never in my life did I think he'd be trying to be a major innings guy for the Yankees. Yeah. No. No, no he's, he, that's exactly what he is. He's a five starter. We shouldn't be relying on him to put up DeGrom like numbers to win baseball games. Speaking of DeGrom, I mean, he's coming off his for, for well, before I get to that, we were expecting, and I was mentioning it to you before, like I was, we were all projecting like a couple weeks out. So obviously, a lot of things were subject to change. I was really hoping they would do DeGrom Cole. And, you know, DeGrom, Cole has been, you know, slacking a little bit since the sticky stuff. Who knows what's going on there? And, DeGrom is coming off his first start in the last like six games where he gave up some runs. So he's a little human there. So who knows what's going on with him? Maybe he had some sticky stuff. I don't know. Now, I'm not going to point any fingers like Josh Donaldson, but I mean, he's looking like, I don't know. No, I'm not worried about him, but I really wish they, I figured they, they could have figured something out in terms of that matchup, like move some pieces around, give the people what they want to see. I think we play one more time this season. So maybe that happens then. A little bit closer to the playoffs, so that could be a lot. That could be a big, pretty big charged matchup there. But I really wish they could get that going. But yeah, in terms of the pitching, like, what are you, are you worried about, Cole or Degrom in terms of sticky stuff? No, I like I like to bust Garrett Cole's balls, of course, about the sticky yeah. stuff because, like, as a Mets fan and like one of my main sticks is like giving it to Yankee fans. Like, of course, it's great, but I'm still like very confident Garrett Cole's a sick pitcher, the second best in baseball. Like, I don't think that's going to change because of the sticky stuff, especially if everyone was really using it. It should be like a non like non factor at this point because everyone's losing it. But I mean, with the Grom, it's more so right now. Like, he looked human because he was like coming off of like some weird injury starts where he didn't necessarily go full games and he's been having minor tweaks here and there. So once he's back to full health, which is another reason why like this DeGrom Cole thing isn't happening is because they wanted to keep him on like his regular rest. He's a dude who's very like regimented and keeps on his schedule. So they didn't want to change anything. I get it. I I also wish I saw DeGrom Cole though this weekend because that's the matchup everybody's been waiting for. Yeah. You know, I was My thinking, next question for you was going to be, is it time to start the rumor that DeGrom's washed now that he gave up <laughs> two whole runs in one game? Yeah, I mean, like, I think it's with DeGrom, you know, washed is definitely a possibility there. A couple runs. I mean, who would have thought that this dude who came from seemingly another planet could even give up a couple runs and this would be like a huge storyline? I think ESPN, like, put up something that, like, DeGrom struggled. And then you look at his lines like, well, he still struck out five and gave up two and six. Like, yeah, that's not I, get, I guess that's struggling, but he's he's so unbelievably good. Like I, I say it all the time, like on our podcast, he's one of the best pitchers I've ever watched. And I think like when it's all said and done, we're going to be talking about like it's like a Koufax type era where he doesn't have all the counting numbers that some of the greats will have. But when you look at like an actual prime, he's going to be up there with some of the best. No, we were talking about that on our podcast, too, because we, we briefly touched upon the Cole uh, DeGrom debate. It's not much of a debate, but we were just having fun with it. It was a little early in the season when Cole was actually just like before the sticky shit happened. And we we're like, you know, obviously DeGrom is the better pitcher. That's an, that's a given. But I think it's it's always been that it, it's not even close. And I think I was just trying to put a little bit of respect on Cole's name at that time. It's like it's a little bit. It's not still not close, but it's closer than people are giving Cole credit for. So I wanted to give him a little credit there. But did yeah. I see correctly that that was the first time this year that Degrom's given up two runs? I think so. Um, <laughs> and he's, also, he's, he's, he's like technically like out given up that, two runs, but with uh, errors. Yeah, I was gonna say I'd like to point out now his RBIs is now tied with his earned runs. So, <laughs> it's so crazy. A stat to watch. If he finishes with more RBIs hit than given up by the end of the year, I, that, I, I don't think that has ever been done before. I'd like to look that up, but I doubt that's ever been done before. I don't think yeah, it's I, we're talking I mean, about Otani. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, he doesn't count. But I was we're talking about Otani being a two-way player. Maybe we should start talking about Degrom being a two-way player. Who knows? He could be the next unicorn. Yeah, and and Otani sucks too. By the I was way, say, is he even a two-way <laughs> player anymore? No, I think the MVP conversation is out the window now from yesterday. 
Who I cares about what happened him to just a DH after yesterday? Like, I'm just saying. We figured him out. We, guys did smack him around quite a bit yesterday. Yeah. And the sad thing is we had like two hits. The rest were just walks. But <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize he was that. I mean, who, who can point fingers now? Chapman walked the entire bases loaded and then gave up a grand slam. So I don't really, I don't know. I was taking a look at the rest of the pitching matchups for this, for the series upcoming. Obviously was really hoping it would be cold to ground, like I said, but the first game is going to be T1 Walker. Taiwan Walker, whatever it is, versus Garrett Cole. Still a good matchup there. I mean, Tiwan Walker, low-key, is having a little bit of an all-star season. Is that fair to say? I mean, he's, he's 6-3 and three with a two three eight ERA. What are your thoughts on Tiwan Walker? Yeah, I've been pushing for Taiwan to be an all-star this year. Um, me, me and James have been, like, big, big Taiwan guys. He's our day man. He's a little bit of a bulldog out there. He's going to give you a clean box score. It's going to be a little bit of an adventure sometimes. Like, he'll lose it, but that's expected for a guy coming off of, like, major surgeries. Like, he has not really pitching much recently. But he's been really way better than we expected. Like, you know, we thought we were going to get Bauer going into this offseason. We got Taiwan, so people were a little disappointed. But then Taiwan comes out here and is shoving, and it kind of puts all those, like, doubts and stuff to the side. Is he going to be able to be a 2-3-8 pitcher the entire season? I doubt it. That's just... Not really the kind of guy he is, but he is giving us some super valuable innings, and he he's given us a chance to really win every single game he goes out there. I yeah. have a one A and a one B to that. One, um, how crazy is it that that was Taiwan Walker's only offer? That just blew my mind because he's been solid for a long time. He was never like you know. I think this would be his first All Star game. He's never been you know an ace, but he's been really good. And then one B to that, where was like, oh, what was Metlan like for the like. 15 and a half minutes that Trevor Bauer was a Met. Yeah. Um, I was getting a haircut at the time. I had the, the lady who like cuts my hair was over and I like my phone buzz. Cause of course, you know, Bob Nightingale tweeted out yeah. Bauer to the Mets and I'm like, Oh my God, you need to stop. And I like ran inside and I was like, tell my dad, I was like, we got Bauer. We got him. Like, Oh my <laughs> God, we got him. And like, I'm like somewhat friendly with the guy. So like at the time I was like, Oh my, I'm going to shoot him a text. Like it's done. It's over. Let's do it. Of course, Bob Nightingale was wrong. and As he usually is. <laughs> as he usually is, because that guy sucks. But, <laughs> I mean, those 15 minutes were like, I was like hyperventilating. I was like, oh my God, this is it. We're doing it. Steve Cohen, he, he's here. <laughs> yeah, and then he did that whole thing with the, the t- didn't he do the t-shirt thing in his bio? I actually was, I was, that's so crazy that people found that so quick. Because wasn't that up for like a couple minutes? And apparently it was, you know, his his team misprinted. I don't know how you misprint. That's not a misprint. That was on purpose, but. Yeah, from what he told me, like in my interview with him the day he signed, he he claimed he didn't know anything about it, that he was like very much like in the weeds of like what team he was going to pick. We've heard things now, you know, through the months afterwards that it was definitely planned. Absolutely. Like he, they're, they're no idiots over there. They're really good at marketing. They're really good at starting buzz. And Trevor Bauer was the only person being talked about in baseball world for about 24 hours. So, yeah. no, that's absolutely obvious that that was on purpose. And yeah. So, in t- but in terms of the other big moves this offseason, you guys obviously land Lindor. Lindor is a, a huge contract. He comes out, and I actually bought his rookie card before he. I'm, I'm a lot into into cards. I bought his rookie card before the season because you know if he were to win a World Series, it's similar to the Durant situation. Like he's coming from little smaller towns and stuff, you know, Golden State, whatever. But like Oakland, o- o- OKC, and stuff. If he gets a championship in New York in a big market, that would shoot up his like career resume. So I was like, okay, Lindor's been in Cleveland for a while, kind of small market. If he comes here to the Mets, who now have a good owner, and I had a little bit of hopes that they could do it, and it would be really fun. And still, you know, maybe more from your perspective, you guys have more of a chance right now for the Subway Series, World Series, but I'm still, still hoping for that. I don't think that's going to happen for us. Maybe things change, but for Lindor... I flipped his card before the season even started, and then he just absolutely tanked as soon as the season started. But I, he is picking up a little bit now. So in terms of the Lindor contract, are you still okay with that? Are you still happy with it? I mean, I, I assumed you'd be perfectly happy with that. Yeah, I think like I would be so hypocritical if I was freaking out right now. Like I, All I've ever wanted is the Mets to spend money. Yeah. Cohen comes in, trades for Lindor one, and then gives him a big contract, which I think he very much deserves. I know there's a lot of people like in the Lindor is not that good camp, and this year is not helping because he is struggling. But if you look at what he did in like that three year span, and I mean he three doubles, close to 100 RBIs with like 850 OPS and some of the best defense at shortstop, he is one of the best shortstops in the game. 
He's struggling right now. That's expected when you come to a new team and a new league facing pitchers that he's legitimately never seen. Like a lot of the guys that he's seen this year is for the first time. So yes, I'm giving him every excuse possible, but also it's because he is too good to be this kind of player. So yeah. I'm not worried. It's it just sucks that it's happening. Yeah, it's similar. On the flip side right. of that, though, look at what the uh, the shortstop situation's been like. You know, for the Mets over the last I don't know ten since Jose Reyes, basically. I mean, you, there's not been shit there. So I mean. If I was a Mets fan and you have this new hotshot owner, everything like that, I would be willing to overpay, even if I don't think it's overpaying. I think Lindor is still one of the best in the game. But even if that was the case, I'd be willing to overpay to get a household name like that in there. Because at the end of the day, he's still going to give you gold glove defense. He's a switch hitter. He gets on base. Like, you know, there are plenty of good things there. And he is that name brand that the Mets have been lacking at shortstop for 10 years yeah he is doing the things that he's been doing always it's just he's not getting the outcomes and that's kind of been like the whole Mets season offensively and one thing that he's doing that's great this year is he's walking more than he ever has he's striking out less so he's actually becoming like a better more disciplined player at the plate he's just not getting the outcomes because he's popping up a few more balls than you know hitting line drives but with this Mets team I mean it's kind of like what you guys have with the Yankees over there It's not my money, so spend it. Spend all the money in the world. I don't care. Give me a team that on paper can win, and then they'll go out there and hopefully get the job done. Yeah, I mean, we've been saying that for the longest time, and Hal is apparently broke, and he's calling broke, and especially with the COVID season and all that. He's like, oh, we lost so much money. He's like, well, you're the most equipped to make it back as soon as the fans are let back in the stadium. Maybe not now because we're not selling out crowds because we fucking suck. Like, I live 10 minutes from the stadium in in New York City, and I, I... would go to the game today, would go to the game all these days. And I'm just not because it's just not fun to watch. I'm not going to give them my money. You know, Hal's addressing the team in like five minutes. So we'll take a listen to that after. Hopefully he sells the team in that meeting. But (laughs) I don't know. I mean, like you said, it's not my money. I think hopefully in this meeting, we're hoping to hear him say like, hey, we're announcing that we're fucking trading for store. We're doing all this because, again, The luxury tax is such a weird thing to me. Like, you guys now are in that camp, too. Like, who the fuck cares? Like, teams do it all the time. The Dodgers are doing it right now. They don't give a fuck. Obviously, you know, the Bauer signing may be all for naught right now because of the -the off-the-field stuff. Who knows? But, you know, when another team in the league is going over the luxury tax and trying to go and do the damn thing, you can't just sit back and not do it. They're pressuring you guys, other competitors and other contenders, to go and match them. So, like, in that case... You can't just sit down and, and cry poor anymore, especially when you're the fucking New York Yankees or the New York Mets, too, who I had never understood why they never went over the luxury tax, too. I know it's the Will Ponds thing. Maybe it was the Ponzi scheme for Bertie Madoff. I don't know. Maybe it's Bobby Vanilla. Happy Bobby Vanilla Day, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. So, so we're going to celebrate that way past 2035. So that's going to be just a national holiday in New York. But man, I don't know. I, I really want the Yankees to go after other people. And I don't want to make this about like, Oh, what do you think? Because I know you're an MLB guy too, not just a Mets guy. But like, do you? Wait, I'll ask that question. Do you actually think the Yankees are going to go out and make some moves, as well yes. as the Mets? You can do the Mets too. Yeah, I think the Yankees have to. Like Cashman's job is on the line. I just like in my video that I dropped yesterday, I someone like asked me like, "Are Boone and Cashman like going to get fired?" And I said, "The way it's going, yes, because Cashman's gone. If they don't at least make the World Series, and they might need to win it for him to stay around, they at least got to put up a good showing. I would think he's been given so much time." It's been over 10 years since that last World Series. I don't know how much more time you can give this guy, especially like the Giancarlo trade is really killing you guys right now. And that's going to be like the big piece that stops you from making moves. It's ridiculous. But if he's gone, Boone's gone. So I think they have a story. That's the guy that you got to want if you're a Yankee fan. It's got to be Trevor Story. And if not, it's like Max Scherzer. That's the other dude. But the Nationals might not trade him now. So. Yeah, since they're starting to surge right now. I mean, story it makes so much sense considering the Glaber Torres situation and whatever the hell's going on with him. I'm not worried about him for the future. I am worried about him as a shortstop, which makes total sense why you would get Trevor Story. I don't know what the ripple effects would be. Maybe Glaber's in that trade because if you do get him, you push Glaber a second, whereas DJ go because Void's there, Gio's a third. So it's a whole big situation. I mean, it's a champagne problem because you have Trevor Story, so who cares? You'll figure it out later, but I don't know. Who do you think the Mets are going to go after? I think the Mets are going to be like very aggressive on the pitching market. Um, some of the guys that like have been coming up is like Jose Barrios, guy from the Twins. He's I would been, love to see them go been, after. Like, bad for a little bit, no? 
I'm not a huge Jose Brios guy. Yeah. That's a name that gets floated around. The thing I don't like about Jose Brios is that we've been like waiting for this breakout for yeah. him. It feels like every single year and he just hasn't done it. The one thing is that we got Jeremy Hefner and he seems to get the best out of everybody. And I know he was in Minnesota with Burrios, so maybe it's just like a little tweak that he has to make and we can push him forward. I also don't really know if he's available. Um, another guy, like I would love to see him go after some of the Reds pitchers, like a Sonny Gray or a Luis Castillo or even like a Tyler Maley. But the Reds are also weirdly competing too. We're in this weird like stretch right now where all the teams that you thought were going to be trading yeah. pitchers are starting to play good baseball again. So the market's getting really, really small, which means you're going to have to give up a lot. And I'm not interested in giving up one of like our three top prospects right now for like a rental. As a cautionary I a tale, side. I would say Sonny Gray may not be the answer in New York. Yeah, as guy, just a listen, cautionary. That's, that's on Rothschild, I feel like. Though. That is He's on Rothschild. Of trading for a pitcher, you guys kind of have the resurgence of Edwin Diaz this year. I'm sure that's got to feel nice after he almost got booed out of the state in New York <laughs> yeah. the last couple of years. Dude, I couldn't watch Edwin Diaz pitch last year. Like yeah. when he would come on the screen, I would get out of the room. I'd put it on loud. I'd listen, but I would not <laughs> watch. I physically could not see what was happening. He made me sick to my stomach, but he had a good year last year. And yeah. this year, I mean, he's been lights out in safe situations. If the game's not a safe situation, he seemingly has no idea what to do. But like the trumpets, I don't know what it is. He gets Did he used to have that- the yips or what? Like he was so good in Seattle, and then he came over there and he just he just imploded for a year. And I mean, he's always had the stuff. He just I don't know what happened. He- I mean, if you look at his 2019 season, which was like just a nightmare, his command was pretty terrible. And he's a dude whose mechanics are not very clean. He's all herky jerky. He's all over the place. And if one thing is going to be wrong. It's going to screw up everything. So like he was a guy who like very much needed his slider to work in order for his fastball to be effective. And her, Jeremy Hefner's fixed that. Like his mechanics are a little more clean now, a little more consistent. He's throwing that slider a lot more, like especially like he started throwing it now to start the count, which is something he didn't really do a lot in 2019. So he's changing the kind of pitcher that he is, and he's just attacking more and hitting his spots. The stuff, like you said, has always been great. He just needed that command, and it looks like he's been able to harness that command a little bit better this year. I know you're a big MLB The Show guy, too. I mean, coming off that season when he had the, the finest card, that card was disgusting. And you get, Sick. and after getting that card, and then he goes straight to the Mets, and like, wow, they really actually got their guy. This guy's going to be fucking – there's no way he's bad. And then he literally ends up being the, probably one of the worst closers we've ever seen for a year. It's it's no secret why he figured it out. Like He actually does have the stuff, like we said, but – in, in terms I'm of- actually curious about uh, Noah Syndergaard's injury, but before that, I kind of want to know, you know, there was that rumor flying around for like, it seems like every summer for two or three years it happened of Syndergaard for Gary Sanchez. <laughs> before you guys got McCann and everything like that, I'm sure you saw it. What, what would your reaction been to that had that came to fruition? Yeah, so I know Gary's playing well now, but I'm just not a believer in Gary. I like very I'm much think really. like, I, I like, I know he can hit, I just don't know if he's going to be able to do it over an entire season, which, I, you know, that's still up for debate, I guess. I hate his catching. I think he stinks <laughs> behind the plate. I don't think that's a secret. I think everyone no. thinks that. But he's got a hit. Now, trading for Noah Syndergaard when that those rumors were coming up, I like. I think I went live on Twitter. might have been the only time I'd ever gone live on Twitter because it was like <laughs> a 1 a.m. tweet from some beat writer who put it out. I was like, oh, shit, it might be happening. Like, it might be happening right now. I need to capture this. I was sweating. I was mad. I was not happy. I'm a big Noah guy, as I should be. Like, he was great for us. Injuries aside, he's he's a horse. So yeah. trading him for Gary just felt like trading our guy at his lowest for a guy who was at his highest, and I, I hate that. <laughs> My little brother's in his uh, first full year of minor league baseball. Uh, Cindergard's one rehab start, he had to face him. He's <laughs> like, dude, holy shit. I was like, yeah, yeah, he throws pretty hard. Yeah, speaking of rehab starts too, like when they when they're both doing their rehab, like I remember that what I don't know what team that was, but they kept tweeting like it's not fair. They kind of like kept it going. They like beat a dead horse. They're like, we get it. You're facing Jacob Degrom. It's cool, but like he was just mow- mowing people down. It's just yeah, unbelievable. I mean- DeGrom does it against major leaguers. Yeah. And he's facing like guys who are 18 and 19 who just got drafted. <laughs> and you're like, come on, man. Like, I'm trying to get called up. Like, you're screwing up my numbers. That's three K's on the day for me. Yeah, you're making me scared to even step in the box after that. I, oh, speaking back on Cindergard, is he coming back this year? I haven't even looked up anything to do with him. I haven't we haven't seen Cindergard pitch what for what feels like since like the World Series when you guys are in it. I just uh, I, I you obviously probably has been there since, but you know, I haven't seen Syndergaard, who is like this big name that everybody, you know, Thor is like a big, 
icon in, in Mets land. Like, are we going to see him pitch? Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Like, I, I obviously want him back because he really does help out this team. And we did think starting pitching was going to be, be a problem, and it hasn't been yet. But at some point, we do need him. He was scheduled to come back right around the All-Star break. And then he got a setback. He felt some, like, I guess, soreness in his elbow, which, of course, coming back from Tommy John, that's a big red flag, sign the alarms. So they you know, took the MRI or whatever, and it was just inflammation. It wasn't an issue, but they basically like stopped him, stopped everything. So it looks like September earliest is going to be when he can come back. It sounds like if he's not ready, he's just going to be shut down, which is a weird thing for us Mets fans because he's coming up on a contract you know, very soon yeah. here. It's going to make him cheaper. So like... As long as we don't need him, I guess it kind of plays to our benefit that he's not going to pitch. Because if he comes out and is throwing 100 and is pitching well, someone's going to throw a lot of money at him. Yeah. If he doesn't throw a pitch, that's the risk he's going to take, and he'll probably just stay with the Mets. I don't know, man. It's so tough. I like I love Noah, but these injuries, it's it's getting concerning. He's just so big and strong. You you guys seen it with Judge and Stanton. Like these dudes, sometimes it's not sustainable. Yeah, and he's very similar to what it feels like to Luis Severino for us. Like he is coming back, he's battling back, and he's looking great this year specifically too. And then he just gets another injury. It's like, come on, man, what the fuck? And now he's coming back again, allegedly, in September. And there was like an interview yesterday. I, I'm sure you saw Chandler that he was talking to like Meredith or something. There's like, were you scared for the season to be over? He like genuinely, he's like, yes, I was scared. Like he, he sounded like a little kid who was just scared. Like enough of this bullshit. Like why am I getting hurt like this? And, you know, if he comes back in September, I think he's in the exact same boat. Like, I, in in terms of me assuming what's going to happen for the Yankees, I don't expect him to come back. And if he does, then like that's just icing on the cake. Same with Kluber, who I hope. I mean, if with that Kluber contract, I'm still happy about it. He got the no hitter, which feels like it was like three seasons ago. But <laughs> I mean, I, I, if we get them both back, that'd be fucking awesome. I think we could also use some starting pitching help. I don't think Sonny Gray is the answer, but. Other pitch, other pitchers on the yeah, on, maybe not for you guys. <laughs> no, not for you guys, and I don't think for you guys either. I think New York was the issue with him. I think he said that on the R two C two podcast too. He was talking about like, yo, New York is just not it. I like going to Oakland and and Cincinnati and small town places. I don't know, but I uh, mean, that's like Granky. Some guys just can't like handle it. Like Granky very much openly hates yeah. playing in New York. So yeah, I mean, for good reason. We gave him hell when he came into the playoffs. But yeah, that was the uh, the Don- the whole Donald chant the first. <laughs> So and he, he walked the bases loaded, walked in a run, and then in typical Yankee fashion, grounded a double play and the momentum. And he went on to throw like six just beautiful innings after that. But fuck, man. Yeah. Uh, Another former, I mean, on the same note of pitching, Batances goes down. What's the deal with him? Is he just never going to pitch again? I am in the boat that, like, I hate what's happened to him because like, Yankee, Met, whatever he is, doesn't, I don't care. Like, I don't want to see guys like careers seemingly just get destroyed because of an injury but Batances just doesn't have it unless he starts magically throwing 98 99 again this guy is not a good pitcher you guys saw it he doesn't have the control he's never had and the, the control vol- yeah, yeah he's, he's never had the control and it's always been he's like been a hard thrower with that nasty like slurve slider whatever you want to call it if he can't throw 98 99 that pitch is significantly worse and like he doesn't have the control to be able to be this soft tosser I think the Mets are just giving him his rehab and eventually just going to DFA him and cut loose and let some team pick him up. But I think they're doing it right by letting him get his rehab in and not cutting him now. But from what we saw at the major league level, he just he's not a major league baseball pitcher anymore. And it sucks because he really was so good and he has just lost it all. Yeah. Speaking of MLB the show, too, that card is disgusting. All of them, the throwback card, that card is even the live series card was always gross to use. It's just like I I feel bad because he was just such a dominant pitcher. And it, what makes matters worse, too, like when he was on the Yankees, he came back and then he gets injured celebrating after striking two people out and he's just like dancing, doing his thing. And then he just like tears a hammy or something. But I, feel, I do feel not really even bad. like dancing. He just like did a little spin off the mound. He tore his fucking <laughs> Achilles like that. It's just perfect Yankee injury something. And people, I joke about injuries, too. And people are like, dude, why would you even put that out there? It's not like I'm hoping for somebody to fucking rip a hamstring. It's just something that would, it's just so Yankees that somebody would strike out and walking back to the dugout, trip over the like pine tar bottle. And that would know, be something I would expect from the Mets. Not, I don't know. Yeah. That's a little, I was about to say, that sounds a little Mets like, you yeah. know, we've got, we've had some injuries over there. No, Syndergaard speaking, I've got hand, foot and mouth disease. Yeah. I mean, oh, come on. Now. I forgot about that. Yeah. That's crazy. So uh, let's, let's take a look about uh, just the rest of the team. We haven't spoke a lot about like the, the, 
bats because I guess the bats haven't really been there because they're all injured. You'd get a little taste of the replacements like we have. And that that Kevin PR stuff is just insane. And, and he battled back, and now he's he's still playing, right, with the mask? Yeah, Pilar's still playing. He's been so – he's like – his numbers aren't great. Like, he's a guy who's never going to have, like, a high OPS because he just yeah. simply doesn't walk or hit for enough power. But he's one of the few guys who, like, come to the plate, and I'm like, this guy at least has a clue what's going on. He's trying to attack pitches. He doesn't seem like he's cheated at the plate. And he's a scrappy little player. That's kind of what he's always been. He's just a scrappy dude. Kind of gets like underlooked because he doesn't put up those home runs or doesn't walk and isn't the fastest. But he's been a really nice like guy to have at the bottom of the order to kind of help lengthen this lineup a little bit. Yeah, and he catches everything out there, which is insane. He's like he, to me, he's like a Jackie Bradley Jr. type player. He just he'll play damn good defense in the outfield, and you'll just live you'll live with the offense. So yeah, his glove's you know. been better than I expected. I thought he was more of like a corner outfielder as he's been getting into his older age. He's still not disgusting defensively in center yeah. really but he's he's good out there he's very serviceable didn't he used to be though he they called him superman when he was on on toronto i think it was yeah no he was gross he was sick yeah. and that's why like i think we get into like a habit of like taking these really good defensive center fielders and moving to a corner really quickly because it's like okay now we can make them elite in the corner yeah almost like the you know astros are trying to do with george springer but he's still very good in center. Like he's our best defensive outfielder, I think by far. Almora technically, but I don't know. I don't really care for Albert Almora. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't either. And in terms of the entire just offense or just everybody in general on the team, who do you think is going to make the All Star team from the Mets? Who's having pretty good years? Because I mean, I haven't heard Pete Alonso's name ever this year, to be honest. Yeah, offensively, it's going to be tough to get a single guy on there. It's going to be really hard offensively. Our best guy offensively this year has probably been Jonathan VR, who's who's hurt right now. Yeah. Again, same thing like OPS hovering around 800. Pete's, I think, technically our highest OPS guy. He's like, same thing hovering around 800, but he's so streaky. He'll have like those two weeks where he's hitting, and then he has two weeks where he's like completely lost, where it's like, where, where are you, Pete? Where'd you go, bud? Yeah. But the power is just not there for him this year. He has not, he's hit one home run, I think, at home, which is crazy. All his home runs have come on the road. So he'll be in the home run derby. He's not going to be, not going to be hitting. In is he in the home run game, derby? Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, he's in the derby. He said he's going to do it. So yeah, he's got to defend Mets it. As an honest Mets fan who's on that side, do we still believe that Pete Alonso is better than Aaron Judge? Sorry, my dog's having a meltdown. <laughs> should, I, should I go or should I? Wait? Yeah, go ahead. Let him. Oh, uh, I was never truly on the board that Pete Alonso is better than Aaron Judge. I got lots of tweets. It's always been like Aaron Judge is is sick. His big thing was injuries, of course, and staying on the field. But if you take those guys at their absolute best, Aaron Judge is better. But of course, I'm always going to bring up like the home runs in the rookie season because that's that's one of the things we got on our list. We got a check yeah. mark there. We got a W. Yeah, and he and he did, he won the fucking home run derby over Vlad that year, which I, Vlad maybe I wish Vlad was doing it again this year so we could see that those two go at it again. I, I honestly think this year for the first time we have actually some pretty damn good names. Usually people opt out of it like almost like the dunk contest. We never get LeBron or anybody doing the dunk contest. We get these smaller names like other people but in terms of i i think for the home run derby to make things more fun i think you shouldn't be allowed to opt out of it i think if you're the top 10 in home runs right in the league at that point you just have to do it that's it it's in the contract and i think that would be so fun like imagine we saw i don't know i don't know the list right now i haven't taken a look but like if we had tatis and we're getting schwarber we're getting like we, i wish we got vlad otani's doing it we're getting we're getting about half of them like judge should do it stanton should do it all of these names should have to do it, and I don't care what they say because this is your job. Like, entertain me, do it. I, I think that'd be really fun, but I don't know. They'd put on a show. I love the home run derby, especially like the new way that they've done it with like the countdown. It's no longer outs. Like, it's very quick. It, yeah. it happens. It's going, and like, I love the idea that it's like you need one home run to win, like a walk off home run, essentially in the home run derby. It's incredible. Yeah, and especially with the countdown thing, I think if, if Vlad was doing it again this year, since he lost 40 pounds, maybe he has the stamina to get through it because that's kind of what happened to him at the end there. I know Pete's no, he's no, uh, he's no spring chicken in terms of the, the cardio, but I mean, he was able to leg him out there. But I am excited for that. Uh, I'm excited for this Mets series. In terms of uh, this series upcoming, do you have any bold predictions for us from uh, this series? Bold predictions. Man, that's going to be tough. The Mets are pretty boring. The Mets don't really do anything Us crazy, too. but my bold prediction will be that Francisco Lindor hits a home run in every single game. I think this is Francisco Lindor's coming out party for the Mets, and this is going to be the series where the Mets fans finally go, there he is. There's our guy, finally. Like Especially against the Yankees. Play yeah. well against the Yankees. Everyone will forget about the rest of the season. 
And that's kind of what we said like when, when the Yankees were going through a little bit of a, a lull early on in the season. We were like, okay, this team will turn it around eventually. We don't know if that's the case now. But like when they had, I had the Astros series circled, and I was like, okay, like you may lose to these the Tigers and all this stuff, but whatever. Like I feel like when you go up against a team that you know is good and there's a lot of animosity to, you'll just light up and you'll – play better that time so I think that is definitely a possibility I don't think it's that that is a little bold in every single game but in terms of you know Yankees Mets I feel like there's going to be a lot of I mean it's, I feel like it's the first time the Yankees and the Mets are good on paper because the Yankees do suck but like this is going to be fun I really really hoped to see another Subway Series World Series and I still hope that happens but I don't know I think I think we're losing the chance there if my the content- prediction is that uh Garrett Cole throws a no-hitter against the Mets. After all the sticky stuff coming off the worst start as a Yankee, he's going to no-hit him. I don't really have any bold predictions for us. I think are, my bold prediction may be just we score runs. Because we, we're, we're coming off just two games where we actually scored runs and the, and the pitching is just imploding. So, you know, I'm expecting very high scores throughout this. Maybe not because your pitching so good, but I don't know. I think we're at least going to put up a few runs, maybe the pitching – gives up a ton to you guys, but your offense has been not so great recently too. So actually I may be talking myself into the unders. So my bold predictions is that we get zeros for all three games and they just, they just (laughs) run the two teams out of town. But our last thing we want to do that we do for any, any new guests that comes on for these series previews, or we've only done a couple of them, but we wanted to do these for all of them. So we're going to do it with you. Um, Whoever wins this series, we were looking to do like some type of prop bet thing, but I think it's just easier to do like whoever wins the series. I think it'd be a fun thing to do. So like on our next podcast, all of us will wear like Mets gears and we'll and we'll say like, oh, the Mets are our daddies type thing, like Pedro said to the Yankees. And if we win, I think you do that for your next video at the beginning of it. I know you like to fuck with the Yankee fans, so I think that'd be a fun little thing if you open the episode or open the the video up with that. Yeah, I could do that. I could uh, find someone who's got something Yankee related. I'll throw it on and, you know, I'll, I'll say a little whatever the Yankees are, our daddy or something like that. I got no problem <laughs> with that. I'm all in on a fr- fun, friendly wager. And I mean, I'm not gonna have to worry because the Mets are going to win. So it's going to be you guys. Yeah, we'll it anyway. see. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're wrong because I think you <laughs> totally could be right. And I think I'm just hoping that, like I said, with the Astros series, I hope I'm hoping that this is something like the stakes are hot, not the stakes are high, but like the. The, the moment is big. I hope the Yankees show up for it. And we like we were talking about before, Hal addressed the media, and his quote was, what was it, Chandler? Uh, he said that Aaron Boone and the coaching staff are definitely our guys, and we yeah. know we're in a rough patch right now. We've lost games before. We're just going to focus on winning. <laughs> Yeah, no shit, buddy. Thanks. Well, really, uh, you know, groundbreaking stuff there from Hal. Yeah. No, he. So yeah, he got called out by like Bob Clappish, and he. Was, I think this is just him addressing that and just being like, I need, <laughs> I need to show people I'm a real person. I, I don't. I agree with Chandler. Chandler said while we were gone that I don't think he watches the games. I think he's just like, I don't know. But I don't even think he has the MLB app. Like somebody texts him, was like, Hey, man, you guys fucking suck. You should probably <laughs> say something. Uh, he doesn't even know their record. He probably thinks they're like 50 and 28 and people are just like upset. Like, hey, man, that's not the case. Just turn on the TV once, you fucking asshole. That's, do they ever show him at the games? Like, I know no. like the Mets, every time Cohen's in the ballpark, they show him. He's no. never been to a game, I don't think. I don't oh think he knows God. where the ballpark is. <laughs> he does I, go to the Bronx. That's not for him. No, he doesn't know where that is. So, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm excited for this series. I think that's... A little bit naive of me to be excited for this series because it could go downhill very fast. But you know, with this team, it's been we've been flip flopping here and there. So we came off a big win last night. I was like, oh, the season's back, and then we do this shit again, and the season's just a dumpster fire. So hopefully, we got some some good baseball to watch, some good pitching One matchups. Guy like you said, got mad at us uh, real quick when you were today. Uh, he was because you know you keep saying your flip flopping World Series is back and everything. One guy commented on our Twitter and was like, "Well, then quit fucking saying the World Series is back on." We're like, dude, it's a joke. Like, <laughs> we're clearly not going to the World Series. Watch a game. Like, you need to join Hal and come to the stadium. We know. Just let us have like five minutes of excitement before it's inevitably ruined. Yeah. No, I'll let you go again. Sorry, I just thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, either way, thank you for coming on, Mark. If you could plug yourself real quick where can the people find you on youtube obviously it's pretty easy but just give yourself a little plug yeah sure giraffe neck mark everywhere mark with a c of course and if you guys are mets fans that are listening to this got a mets podcast Metsed up 
Um, you can Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all that stuff. But Draft Nick Mark, that's the main thing. Mark with a C. Don't forget it. Yeah, definitely check him out. And he's not just Mets stuff too. Like like he said, it's just a bunch of just MLB content rankings and stuff. I know those do really well for you. I think those are really fun. Uh, but yeah, I've been following your stuff for a long time. Kind of awesome that you came on, took the time out to talk to talk with us. So appreciate you coming on, and uh, hopefully we talk soon for the next Mets series. And yeah, definitely. Let's uh, let's talk again bat. soon. Thanks for having me on, and yeah, let's go Mets. Let, no. Appreciate. <laughs> I hope you lose every game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll catch you later, man.